All right. So let me get started. Um, yeah, I'm Ben, a data engineering manager at Vestia Collective. My journey in the tech uh, world is quite diverse, starting with doing some data science and machine learning to data engineering. So I have worn many hats, and it has equipped me with a unique perspective on opt optimizing data workflows. Let's quickly set the stage by talking about where I work, Vestia Collective. It's a marketplace for authenticated pre-loved designer fashion. And simply put, we are in the business of helping you buy what you want, sell what you don't, and discover unique uh, pieces. Let's quickly talk about some numbers to understand uh, how Airflow has evolved at Vestia Collective. In 2020, we had around 100 daily active decks, 8,000 tasks, and 5,000 snowflake jobs, uh, making up around 63% of the total. The 95th percentile execution time is around three minutes for Snowflake uh, jobs operator and uh, 10 minutes for DBT task. Now let's fast forward to 2023. The deck has more than, have more than uh, double to 250 now. And the task have exploded to 380,000. Um, Snowflake jobs has also make up to 60%, around 60% of the total. The, their execution time now has increased to 10 minutes. Similarly, uh, DBT task also increased about, uh, it need to take about 110 minutes to, at, uh, sorry, at the 90, 95th percentile. So the point here is, Growth is excellent, but also need to uh, also leads to some challenges, and namely longer execution times. So, as we move on, let's delve into some specifics, which has already been optimized in our Airflow service. This slide highlights some key areas we have already optimized. You will also notice that on the infrastructure level, we have implemented additional uh, schedulers as well. But is that enough? Spoiler alert, it's not. The reason is that we only had only one uh, production warehouse on Snowflake for all the airflow jobs. And since the warehouse working a first come, first serve way, so we found the bottleneck is here. It's Snowflake. After identifying the bottleneck, our next step is to decide on the approach. Do we opt for a pre-built management solution or should we consider a custom self-service route? Snowflake's enterprise license offers something similar to what we want to build, but it comes with uh, some Features may all be maybe overkill for our specific use case, especially for uh, queuing and runtime optimization. If we go down to the cost, custom route, we also need to think about the performance metrics to measure the success. Are there open source solutions that can easily integrate with our existing workflow? But let's not forget, building our own solutions come with its own set of challenges. It's essential to uh, anticipate and plan for the potential pitfalls. So essentially, what we want to build is like a ticket dispenser. And let's dig into some potential pitfalls with our ticket dispenser idea. First off, what if the dispenser itself becomes a new bottleneck? We need to design well 
to avoid that issue. But luckily, it's just an HTTP server, so the fix is doable. Next, consider the ticket dispenser assigning task to the wrong counter, or in our case, warehouse. Imagine getting stuck in the slowest checkout lane at the grocery store. We need our system to be smart enough to know the current status of warehouse in Snowflake and which warehouse is best for each task. So this slide serves as a small recap summarizing what we aim to address as we venture into the coding phase. Our key objective here is solving the queuing and wrong time issue. But in the meantime, we need to prevent some pitfalls when building custom service. Next, we want to deploy, uh, develop a flexible intervention mechanism for our DBA. Evaluate the trade-off between efficiency and cost-saving options, whether to manage queue more efficiently or we open a new warehouse. Now that we have outlined our objectives, let's move on to discuss how we began implementing these strategies into our system. So I will uh, break the implementation part down into three key parts pr to provide a comprehensive overview. First up on the very, this is right, sorry, I always have some problem with this. Um, the building block of the system. And the second in the middle, it's called WENS. This is the heart of our solution. Finally, we get to the algorithm this is the brand behind the operation. Now let's take a look at how our plans actually work out. Let's discuss the hook first, a key component of our design. For people who are not familiar with hook or this concept, think of a hook as a universal remote, as a task, for the task. It helps you easily interact with external services. We have extended this feature, allowing dynamic modification instead of using a fixed connection for our Snowflake hook. This serve, serves as a foundation for our upcoming service WENS. As we ex extended our Snowflake hook capabilities, you might be wondering how exactly we have accomplished this, uh, this. Our approach involves two main steps. First, we execute a HTTP call here to determine the optimal warehouse based on the JIG ID, task ID, and historical data. Then we initialize the hook with this new, more suitable warehouse, overriding the predefined one. This slide provides this code snippet to illustrate this process. Take a moment to look at how we overwrite the uh, getDBHook method. The, this tailor approach gives us a far more responsive and adoptable system. Let's turn our attention to another cornerstone of our solution, WENS or the warehouse allocation service and rule engine. I know it's a bit mouthful, but it's the core of our uh, system. Smartly allocating tasks based on near real-time warehouse data. Here's where everything comes together. The hook interacts with the server in the custom get warehouse method. Once we'll take uh, all the metadata like Take ID, task ID, warehouse information, and smartly allocate task to the most suitable warehouse. And we are not merely assigning task. 
we are leveraging uh, the combination of our go-to technology to ensure that once we operate as efficiently and effectively, sorry, as possible. That's the ultimate goal of WINS. By now, you have got a good grasp of what WINS is and what it aims to achieve. But how does it fit into our airflow uh, workflow? This, this slide will provide you a visual representation of that very integration. As you can see, once it's positioned after airflow, workers, and before Snowflake in the sequence, it serves as an intermediary, taking tasks from the workers and be, uh, allocating them to the appropriate warehouse in Snowflake. Additionally, once utilize uh, a separate backend database for storing all the data for the algorithm and minimizing the latency and also completing this flow. <clears throat> As you can see on this slide, we have multiple components uh, interacting to achieve our goal of efficient task allocation. Let's walk through the sequence following the number of the animation steps. First, the worker will ask when about the optimal warehouse. Second, in response, WENS will compute the current suitable warehouse for the task. To ensure WENS knows the latest status of the warehouse, its backend is consistently sync with Snowflake every 15 seconds. Once WENS has the information, it communicates with the worker to send a job to Snowflake and run the query on the assigned warehouse. So what we have here is a dynamic system where WENS determine which warehouse uh, should work or execute a task and where it should do so. All based on warehouse information, historical data, and predefined algorithm. We have talked a lot about task allocation, but you might be wondering how exactly this algorithm works. Let's walk through a couple of examples. So this is example one. We have a snowflake job with a medium size, and it will be assigned to a medium warehouse group with two options inside. Uh, warehouse A with uh, Q score zero and warehouse B with Q score one. The task will be assigned to warehouse A because it has the lowest Q score. Now let's look at uh, example two. Consider a small size snowflake drop. It will be redirect. It will be re uh, direct to a small warehouse group with three options inside, uh, with a warehouse A and B both with Q score five, while warehouse C is sleeping. Now the algorithm faces a decision. Should we wake up warehouse C, or should we randomly assign the task to either warehouse A or B? In both examples, the algorithm consider factors like warehouse load, uh, job metadata to make an informed decision. It's not one size fits all. It's a customizable and adaptable to different scenarios. So on this slide, we delve into the quantifiable achievement we have, we have made through our warehouse allocation optimization efforts. We have seen notable 36% decrease in total runtime for our all the tasks. And it doesn't stop there. 89% of our job have shown improvements. 
the medium run time has decreased by 83%. And our best perform uh, task has seen a 1.500 decrease in run time. However, not everything is rosy. Our uh, worst case has increased by 181%. This is an area we are keen to improve. Now let me draw your attention to a metric that I know many of you are keenly interested in, the credit usage in Snowflake. We have successfully reduced our credit expenditure by around 10%. And this is not just a win for efficiency. It also, it's also a significant cost saving measure. The data you see here is based on the comparison between Q1 2023 versus Q2 plus Q3 2023. And we have made this comparison between two different operators, taking into account only successful jobs. As we wrap up the presentation, I did like to highlight some key lessons we have learned along the way. Firstly, the importance of data analytics. Understanding your data is fundamental to any successful resource allocation strategy. In our case, leveraging the, uh, this guiding star was instrumental in making informed decision. So don't underestimate the Airflow Meta Database. It's a valuable resource. Secondly, the role of the dispatching algorithm. It's not a universal blueprint for optimization. Your unique challenges require unique solutions. It's not just about the technology. It's also about the thought process behind it. And last but not least, the potential and the values. Airflow's flexibility allows for extensive customization. While this is powerful, you need to exercise caution. Customization is a double-edged sword. And then for the future decision, the direction, we have started to uh, exploring the possibility to extend this service to incorporate assigning Kubernetes pod templates and mean to prevent resource over committing. So there you have it. The core lessons have uh, from our journey boiled down into these three main points. Thank you for your attention. Thanks.